In amongst the smoke and the noise, the tyres and the toys of the Land Rover Owner Show 2022 at Peterborough, I found some amazing Defender Daily drivers with truly unique trucks. Here's a sneak peek from some of the more detailed interviews that will be coming over the next few weeks. Welcome back Defender fans, flat top here. And this is going to be an exciting weekend. I'm on my way down to Peterborough to the Land Rover Show which is one of the biggest, if not the biggest, in the UK. So we can expect to see plenty of very interesting defenders of all shapes and sizes. I'm looking forward to finding out what makes these Defender daily drivers tick and what it is about the Defender that ticks all the right boxes for them. Stay tuned. Now this is what I call a car park. This is the Land Rover only section, where if it comes from Solihull or thereabouts, you're in luck. Look at these here. Land Rovers, Defenders, Range Rovers, absolutely every sort of Land Rover you could imagine. This genuinely is Land Rover paradise right let's get parked up and get into the show hey, fellas right. yeah the good as gold mate well that didn't take long within 100 yards of getting into the show i came across a very interesting series one trayback conversion and here's jake souch its owner to tell you a little bit about it my name's jake souch i'm owner of brandall metalwork <laughs> Um, this is my 1957 Series 1 109 um, I built four years ago for more of a business advertisement, Green Lane vehicle, I've, I wasn't going to off-road it but I did because we're all children. Um, yeah, it, was, it, was a bit, it started as a business advertisement because obviously it's different um, and turned out I was going to use it more than I did. Um, does get used quite a lot for bigger jobs, metal work jobs. So you use the is that, is that why it's a tray back or? Yeah, well, it was, it was something a bit different. I wanted to get into building tray backs and modifying vehicles a bit more. So it was a, just a, a show of this is what I can do um, to see what sort of interest I had from customers. Um, and it sort of spiralled really. Um, I did I did a few. I've done a six for six um, Cummins conversion Defender, which right. is here today. Well, yeah. Tell us a little bit about the sort of history of this particular truck and when you got it. And you had quite an exciting trip up to the first show, didn't you? So yeah, it started as a recovery truck, and it came out of the factory, went straight on trade plate, uh, hence the Q plate on it. Uh, got registered in 84, 85, um, and then it, it was, it, the body was still on it, which is part of the reason why I did what I did, because it wasn't straight and how it was. So yeah, I mean, it was one of those, I built it, I did three weeks solid on it after doing weekends and evenings for a little while. Um, I <laughs> drove it from the workshop to my house at the time on Thursday evening, broke the transfer box on the way home, went back to the workshop, stripped it all, rebuilt it all, finished rebuilding it at about Friday lunchtime, drove it the 170 miles to Peterborough the next, that, that evening that I finished it. Um, so it was, yeah. It was a bit touch and go. I was, I was, there was a breakdown on the M11, I think it was and the exhaust was coming loose. So I was solid traffic on my back on the M11, doing the exhaust nuts back up, what <laughs> ones were left on there. So yeah, it was quite an exciting trip up first time. It was, yeah, good rundown trip, that was for sure. Thanks, Jake. And in the full interview, you'll hear a lot more about the details of the trayback conversion and also some of the engine issues that he's having at the moment. While wandering around the club section of the show, I came across a very tidy TD5 double cab Defender. And Jane was kind enough to spend a few minutes to tell me about it. 
Um, so this is a 110 double cab pickup. It's a TD5 engine. It's um, it's actually 16 years old. As a it vehicle. certainly doesn't look it. No. So um, I um, what I do is I run a building company and a Land Rover restoration company with my husband, um, and I use it for work and for family and for getting out and about. So this is a, a, a daily driver for you? Yes, yeah, absolutely. And do people wonder why you choose a, a Defender rather than a uh, comfortable waterproof vehicle? Um, not really, I'm not very conventional um, and I just like, I just love Land Rovers. Um, uh, so this hasn't always been, I mean, if, if this is 16 years old, has this been through your restoration? No, 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 this is so, our restoration is mainly petrol engined older um, Land Rovers. Um, we don't generally do stuff like this, um, so no, it's not been through through our workshop. But I was very lucky to buy it off somebody who I know, so I know it's history and it's really been extremely well looked after. Uh, and you say it's a TD5? Yes. Regular tune, or have you done anything to it? Um, it came with a map on it already, but I may get a bit more boomf at some point. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a double cab and I see you've got a nice uh, hood on the back. Yep. What do you use the back for? Um, just generally putting like tools and things in like um, as you can see it is quite tidy so I don't like to put bags of cement or sand in the back of it but I'll put some nice uh, clean timber in or my hand tools or things like that or some boxes of screws just stuff that needs to get out and about around the site so yeah. And I love your mirror ornament. Uh, <laughs> what's the story behind that? Oh, the skulls? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I actually found that on a building site. We were clearing a house and I just kind of liked the look of it and That's great. took it for my own. <laughs> In the full interview, Jane tells us a little bit about her very impressive Land Rover collection and about a rather unfortunate mishap that happened on the way down to the show. This next truck is a bit of a monster. Dan, its owner, is a lifelong Green Oval man. Let's see what he brought down to the show. Um, it's, a, it's a Land Rover Defender. Um, I put a high ab on it, which uh, goes out to seven meters. I use for delivering firewood. Um, it, uh, we use it for agriculture and construction use as well around the farm. Um, I built it three, potentially three years ago, something like that. Um, wasn't amazingly tricky but um, it's uh, run off the transfer box PTO pump um, it uh, lifts I think it's about 1200 kilos right in and at seven meters it lifts 350 kilos right out so that must be handy for dropping in bags of yeah, logs into dropping gardens bags and of logs over fences uh, sort of put them anywhere within reason to the truck and a bit easier than towing a trailer on Yeah, a lot easier than towing a trailer. I can put four bags of logs on the back um, and also tow a trailer with logs on the back of the trailer um, to help me get in places, basically. Um, it's running a 300 TDI engine, nothing fancy. Um, oh, but this isn't your first uh No, this isn't the first. Rover, I've got quite a few projects. Uh, my dad brought me my first Range Rover Classic when I was about 10 um, and ever since just started taking them apart and building them. So you've taught um, yourself everything? But yeah, all self-taught, uh, taught me to weld, uh, taught me sort of a load of just different skills of doing things basically and just always had them really. <laughs> <laughs> well I did say that Dan was a lifelong green oval man. I'd be surprised if his heart doesn't pump diesel. This next truck is a real change of direction. It was built to be a full-time daily driver, but is still waiting to find that lucky driver. When I show you, I think you'll understand why I had to stop and have a chat with Tom, its owner and designer. Yeah, so I'm Tom Duckworth. This is uh, the first venture of Duckworth Overland, our um, 4x4 restoration and uh, coach building business. We're, um, we make one-off habitation pods for, uh, well, this one's on a 130 Defender, and we're going to be doing it on lots of other vehicles going forwards. Um, this vehicle is called the Aurox. It's uh, sort of designed to be driven across Central Asia and Europe primarily, which is uh, all made using traditional coach building techniques. It's all made using a wheeling machine, 
um, same sort of uh, machine they used to make Spitfires and uh, vintage cars back in the day. Uh, and so, yeah, so the external skins, all aluminium, it's aluminium framed, and then the internals are all bamboo uh, and real wood. We've got um, oak from just uh, five miles down from our workshop. Um, and yeah, obviously, all the Harris tweed and leathers all from the UK as well. Well, what do you think, eh? Quite impressive. I've already checked down the back of my sofa and sadly didn't find the quarter of a million quid that would be needed to buy this beauty. Well, I've saved this interview for last. At shows like this, you meet all sorts of people, but very few have the breadth and depth of experience of John Horn. In fact, I wouldn't be at all surprised if John was the original inspiration for Indiana Jones, such as his enthusiasm for adventure travel. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, John Horn. I'm a Yorkshireman, tight-fisted Yorkshireman. Um, and uh, until 1970, I was a somewhat uncivil servant. Uh, a job in the Yemen, a two-year posting in the Yemen, changed life completely. And I quit the job and went into adventure travel. And I've been in adventure travel now for the past 50 plus years. Well, this is a 1971 uh, Land Rover Series 2A. Um, when, uh, and it's got a Carawagon conversion. This is a bespoke uh, conversion done by Searles of Sunbury in 90, well, in the, uh, in the 60s and 70s. Uh, and uh, we're a bit precious about one thing, and that's when people come up and say, did you make it yourself? No, no, it's, it's a very expensive, originally a very expensive uh, uh, conversion. Well, yes, it's uh, an amazing story. I belong to the Series 2 Club, Land Rover Series 2 Club, and the secretary in uh, 2005 alerted me to this vehicle, which had been found uh, in a garage in uh, North Wales, in Maddock, and it belonged to a Lady Sopwith Pilkington, and that right. was the name on the V5, Lady Dorothy Sopwith Pilkington. And it was found in a garage and uh, as part of her estate when she died. I jumped on it straight away when I heard about it and managed to acquire it. Well, it was full of memorabilia. Uh, she'd been to Saudi Arabia, she'd been to South Africa, she'd been uh, from uh, Port Maddock to Cape Town in this vehicle. And uh, inside it I found a pair of her slippers, uh, a canvas hip bath, half a bottle of scotch, two packets of senior service, one still in the cellophane, it was full of history. It had badges on the front, Saudi Arabian AA, South African uh, Automobile Association. They vanished at billing one, uh, one time, yes. which was a bit of a shame. But it's full. This is the real deal. Mechanically, 100% uh, bodily, exactly as it was found. Um, I was... Uh, one of my neighbours commented that I, some car had crashed in the front and dented it. I said, no, I said, that was a rampage in Rhino in Tanzania, probably. Well, I could listen to John's tales of adventure all day long, and you'll hear more of them in the full interview out in a week or two's time. Well, that's the quick overview of the people I spoke to at the Land Rover Show 2022. I hope you found them interesting, and please do check out the full versions, which will be online over the next week or two. And remember, if you've got an interesting Defender Daily, send me a video and we'll get it on the channel. In the show notes below, I'll put a few tips and ideas on how you can get the best from your video and a few suggestions on questions that would be worth answering. Until next time, enjoy your Defender Daily.